Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcasts.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing and uh, supporting the show. And uh, with that, um, I did not get the last episode of Season 17 in before the end of the year last year. I ended up making an unplanned uh, family-related trip out of state, so uh, that kind of stuff sort of happens. And so uh, with that, this is the last episode of Season 17. Season 18, Episode 1, will be next week, so keep an eye out for that. Starting off over at MarketWatch Linux, uh, new Linux Foundation members span diverse market segments. Uh, the Linux Foundation, the nonprofit organization dedicated to accelerating the growth of Linux and collaborative development, today announced that uh, IIX Inc., Micron Technology and Planasys are joining the organization. From mature storage software to disruptive direct interconnection technology, today's new members represent both large global institutions and newly launched companies. Despite their differences, uh, the new members believe open source and its shared development and funding model is strategic for achieving global growth. By investing in Linux collectively, these companies are best able to support open source to ensure it remains a viable, secure, community-driven, and independent technology for numerous industries. So this is pretty good. Definitely uh, check that out. Uh, CES is in full swing, and uh, from Stephen J. Vaughn Nichols for his Linux and open source blog over at ZDNet, he's got a little bit of rundown of some Linux Penguin in your TVs. Over at CES, he writes, Linux fans can happily tell how Linux is the most popular end user operating system thanks to Android, how Tux the Penguin, Linux's mascot, rules supercomputers, and how even Microsoft loves Linux now because of its power in the cloud. What even they might not know, but uh, has become crystal clear at CES, is that Linux also now dominates smart and 4K TV. One manufacturer after another turned on its latest, smartest, biggest 4K TVs at CES. Sam Samsung has a bendable 105-inch TV. LG has a model that shows just how thin a TV can be and a relative unknown Hisense, 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 not sure how to pronounce it, uh, wants to convince you that projector TVs aren't dead. I could go on and on, but if there's one thing to know about CES is that this show is all about the biggest and best new TVs running some form of Linux under the covers. So uh, pretty cool. Definitely check this article out, especially if you are looking to uh, buy a new TV and you want to get something that's that's got some smarts built into it. From gmanetwork.com, uh, Chromebooks can now run Linux via Chrome OS. Good news for users of Chromebooks, the notebooks that run Google's Net-centric Chrome OS. You can now run Linux right within a window instead of having to switch back and forth between the two operating systems. So this is pretty cool. Uh, Frank Coy Buford, a Google employee, said this is possible through the downloadable Crouton extension for Chrome. Uh, with the patch, fearless people can now run their favorite Linux distributions on their Chrome devices in a nice window without jumping between virtual terminals as before. So if you're a Chromebook user and you want to run Linux, definitely uh, take a look at that plugin. From ComputerWorld.com, the Grinch isn't a Linux vulnerability, Red Hat says. Now, we previously reported on this, uh, and uh, according to... Uh, Red Hat, the Grinch Linux vulnerability that alert logic raised alarms about is not a vulnerability at all. Uh, the report incorrectly classifies expected behavior as a security issue, said a Red Hat bulletin issued Wednesday responding to alert logic's claims. Security firm alert logic claimed that Grinch could be as severe as the heart, 
heart bleed bug and that it's a serious design flaw in how Linux systems handle user permissions which could allow malicious attackers to gain root access to a machine. But according to Red Hat, the system was designed to work that way. In other words, it's not a bug, but a feature. I, I, you know, I don't know at this point. I'm not that heavy of a Red Hat user, so it would be hard for me to give any sort of, uh, you know, if Red Hat says it's a feature, they're not going to fix it. So there you go. From GameSpot.com. Com Razer reveals open source VR headset, the OS VR. Pretty neat. Gaming tech firm Razer has revealed its answer to the Oculus Rift, a $200 virtual reality headset with head tracking capabilities and a 1080 by 1920 display. Known as the OS VR headset, the open source dev kit can work with all VR devices including the Oculus DK2, meaning that engines and software built with Oculus in mind are theoretically supported. Uh, the OS VR will be released at least as a dev kit in June of 2015, so it's still uh, five-ish months away, five to six months away. It'll carry two five-and-a-half-inch displays as well as a 100-degree field of view. That's a pretty nice field of view. And internal sensors for head tracking. Um pretty interesting uh definitely we'll have to wait to see how it works in practice i mean obviously it's you know not much more than prototype stage if they haven't released it as a dev even if they haven't even released it as a dev kit so it should be pretty interesting from linuxgizmos.com mini itx and com express boards tap the fifth generation core cpus conga tech has announced two two uh, Linux ready boards based on Intel's new 14 nanometer fifth generation core processors. One is a mini ITX uh, single board computer and the other is a Com Express module. Following uh, Intel's release of their fifth generation core processors using the 14 nanometer Broadwell architecture, Conga Tech stepped up with a Conga TC97 Com Express Type 6 compact computer on a module and a Conga IC97 Thin Mini ITX board based on the chips. Pretty awesome. If you want a tiny, tiny, tiny little computer, that's what you need. The first generation of the Broadwell Core chips are primarily, primarily notable for faster, more capable graphics rather than overall performance improvements thanks to the new Intel HD Graphics 5500 and 6000 technology. Uh, in addition to that, power consumption is also generally lower when comparing the full product range to the previous 4th gen Haswell core processors. So, pretty cool. Definitely check it out. That'll do it for this edition of Linux News Log for uh, Season 17 and uh, just the episode in general. I didn't have any more news. It's been really kind of light uh, the last few weeks, which is one of the reasons why I didn't to do any episodes a couple of weeks ago or even a week ago uh, but anyway uh, that will do it for this edition so definitely uh, subscribe if you haven't already if for those of you who have thank you so much for subscribing and with that I will see you in season 18 episode 1 next week see you then bye